Good morning, guys. Today we're going to be looking at um, percent composition as far as um, looking at a compound and deciding how much each element in that compound to contributes to the compound's overall mass. Um, so when we see percent composition asked about in a question, um, the formula is part over whole times 100. And um, if we do take a regions this year, the um, the regions chemistry reference tables has a, a back page that is filled with formulas, and this formula is on there. But for you guys, um, you do have to know what the formula is, and you probably already know it from math. So um, what I like to do is, um, is look at the whole compound and get the mass of the whole thing first. So if you don't have your periodic tables out yet, you should get those out and, um, and a calculator as well. So um, this is CO2. So the mass of carbon is 12. And then I have two oxygens. And if I add that all up, I get 44. Okay. So um, as far as percent, I can either be asked about the carbon or I can be asked about the oxygen. Now, when you read a question, um, the question will specify which element they're caring about at the time. Um, I'm just going to show you how to do both of these. So um, for percent carbon, the mass of the part is the part of the compound that's being asked about. So we would want to put carbon's mass on top, which happens to be 12. The mass of the whole compound goes on the bottom times 100. And if you throw that in your calculators, you get 27.3%. Okay. The only thing you have to be careful with, guys, the only thing that can make this, um, like where you can, I guess, maybe make a mistake. Um, so for my next part, I want to find what percent of this compound is oxygen. So you might be like, oh, okay, oxygen is 16. 16 divided by 44 times 100. It does matter how many of each element you have. So because I have two oxygens, I'm going to want to put a 32 on top, not a 16, divided by 44 times 100. So just be careful when you're counting your atoms. And I would get 72.7% oxygen as my answer. Okay. Um, next one is is percent composition as far as hydrates go so the formula is exactly the same but again um, when you're finding the mass of a hydrate there are places where you can make a mistake um, so so let's go through this one copper is 64 sulfur is 32 if i have four oxygens that's four times 16 64 now, um, you could do this one of two ways. In the last video, I showed you um, to distribute the five. So you would count up the mass of 10 hydrogens and five oxygens and add that all up. Um, I actually prefer, and I think, um, I just think that this is easier, but you guys can decide. Um, if you think about water, water weighs 18 because I have an oxygen that's 16 and two hydrogens that's 17, 18. So I just like to do, okay, five times 18. There are my five waters. So I think of water as one thing instead of distributing. Um, I've seen a lot of times um, we forget to distribute the five or whatever number it is to the oxygen. And then your, your whole is going to be incorrect. Um, whatever you like better, um, that's totally up to you. So I get the mass of this whole thing to be 250. Now, typically, when you have a hydrated compound, they ask you for the percent water in the hydrate. So 250 is the mass of the whole compound, including the water. Um, I would want to put the mass of the water on the top then, because that's the part that the question is asking me about. So I would put my 5 times 18 on top divided by 250 times 100. And if you throw that in your calculator, you should get 36%. Okay. Now, um, 
we're actually going to try to do this lab this year, but what can happen is um, you're given something that you know is a hydrate, but you don't know the formula of it. So you also have to be able to figure out percent composition of water and a hydrate using laboratory data instead of being given the formula and using the periodic table masses. So I want you guys to think about this. Um, let's say it's summertime, right? You're in the ocean. You come out of the ocean and your body is covered in water, right? As you sit in the sun, if you expose water to heat, what happens to it? It dries up, it evaporates, right? So it's the same type of thing happening here. My hydrated salt, meaning my salt that has water in it, weighs 10 grams. And something funny, guys, um, these hydrated salts are not actually wet. It's not like we took salt and we mixed it with water. They just have water molecules bonded to them. So you're going to see what this looks like in the lab. Um, so 10 grams with the water. As we heat up the salt, the mass goes down because the water is leaving. Just like water would leave your body as you dry off, right? So they want to know what is the percent water in the hydrate, right? So right now, the water is evaporated. It's in the air. How are we going to figure out? This is my bottom number. 10 grams was my original salt with the water in it. How do I know how much water in it, it was in it if it's in the air? If you subtract the hydrated salt from the anhydrous salt, this is called anhydrous, meaning the water has left. Um, that'll show you how much water was in there to begin with. So your answer would be 30%. So depending on the data you're given, you'd have to be able to do that. All right. Um, so I'll give you guys some practice. We'll talk more tomorrow.